What is going on, online fitness coaches? Welcome to another episode of the Change Lives Make Money Online Trainer Podcast. This is the number one show for online fitness coaches who are trying to grow successful online business. In today's episode, I'm joined by my business partner, the Wolf, Mr. Cole De Silva. What's up, Cole? How you doing, dog? I oh, I am great. I was muted there for a second. <laughs> I'm fucking amazing, honestly, guys. Um. Uh, for everybody who doesn't know, all right, maybe you guys aren't following me and Brian on social media, you're just listening to this. Um, I got to Kelowna three days ago, and I honestly, like, I wish I could say I feel amazing. I feel amazing mentally. Okay, I'll say that. I feel amazing mentally. Um, love being here, but I'm literally beat to shit right now. Um, I've, like, scheduled the first three days of my trip so fucking jam-packed, um, but I honestly love it. Like, being around everybody, being at the gym, seeing me in person again um because a lot of people like don't realize like you know me and Bree, b are workhorses but when me and b are together um it's like 10 times more intense across the board which is fucking awesome so i'm, I'm very good mentally but physically i'm pretty exhausted yo i want to talk about something for a second so um actually before we get into today's podcast um if you guys want to be entered to win a thousand dollars cash i'm going to give you guys an opportunity to do that all you got to do, screenshot any podcast episode, share it to your Instagram stories and tag me at BMarkFit. Let me know that you're tuning in and you're automatically entered to win $1,000 cash. So if you want to win 1000 bucks, that's all you got to do. Screenshot any episode, share it to your Instagram stories, tag me at BMarkFit. So Cole, uh, I'm going to throw a curveball into the conversation here. All right. And we didn't talk about talking about this, but we're going to talk about it anyways. Um, we're going to talk about complaining for a minute. All right, we're gonna talk. Cole's like, all right, we're gonna talk about complaining. Sounds fucking good to me, bro. This is gonna be a fun one. We're gonna talk about complaining because um, inside of your online coaching, okay, so let's be fully transparent, right? So Cole and I, we run a community called the 10K Coaching Academy for online fitness coaches who are trying to grow successful online business, right? So me and Cole run this academy and inside of the academy, here's, here's how it works, right? So online coaches are struggling to grow their coaching business. They don't know how to market themselves on social media. They don't know how to get on sales calls. They don't know how to promote themselves. So basically what they do is they will uh, join our program and then they'll start working on their business. Um, and one of the things that like, that I want to make super clear about joining any sort of coaching program is joining your program doesn't actually build your business. Just like, you know, when you guys have fitness clients that sign up for your online fitness coaching program and they're hiring you to help them lose 20 pounds, as soon as they pay you, it's not like, you know, the, that the, the weight just melts off automatically. Like there's a certain level of work involved. And, you know, when a fitness client hires you and you have to tell them to go to the gym and to exercise and to eat healthy, like they have to do all these things in order to lose weight. And if they don't do all the things, they're not going to lose weight. And yep. so because they have to do all the things, because they have to eat healthy, because they have to go to the gym, because they have to drink their water, like you have to do the things anyways. So what's the point on complaining about it? Am I right? 100%. Or am I wrong? Fucking a million percent. Literally guys, nothing bothers me more than complaining. Um, like I'm going to just keep it fucking straight with you. One of the reasons why I stopped fitness coaching is because fitness clients, okay, people who are trying to lose weight, et cetera, I did not like the complaining with it. I like, I wanted to be around people who wanted to like work harder. And I saw that in business coaching. And that's why I really wanted to help people because not only do I want to help you guys build your businesses so you can impact more lives, but I also feel like a lot of you guys work harder. A lot of you guys have that drive behind you, but complaining drives me fucking mental. Um, like, cause there's no point in it. It's either do the fucking work or shut the fuck up and stop doing it. Like, why are you in this game in the first place? And this is something that I feel like a lot of people really need to hear. Like, they need to understand that you are a result of the effort you put in on a daily basis. So if you're not seeing results in your business, it's probably because you're slacking the fuck off or you're not doing anything to like, you need to be doing. Right. And it's, it's like complaining has no fucking value. It doesn't do anything. But it's like, it's so easy to complain about shit, right? Like you, you know, you get on a call with a client and they say no to you. It's really fucking easy to be like, oh man, like this fucking client, I just got on a phone call with them and I spent 30 minutes of my time and they said no. And they said they really wanted to, but then they say no. It's like, like there's no value, zero, zero value say, in complaining. And I want to say this on the other side of it as well, guys. This is a very, 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 yes, I did that on purpose. Very um, big difference between complaining and searching for a deeper understanding of what the fuck is going on. Mm. All right, like understand that shit. Maybe you're getting on calls, you're getting no's, you're annoyed, you have clients that are slacking off, you have clients that are leaving. There's something that's going on in your business. There's a very big fucking difference between complaining 
and figuring out what's actually going wrong in your business and how to fucking fix it. All right. And we see it every fucking day. All right. There's a literally no value to just making a post and being like, yo, it fucking sucks outside. I'm having such a bad day. Like I don't know what to do. Okay. We'll oh, fucking dude. figure it out. But drives me fucking bananas. Make a, if you made a post saying I'm having a very hard time with my mental state right now. And I really need help on like trying to figure out how to go about my day and how to like fix my mental health right now. That's a good post. That's you trying to figure out the problem. That's yeah. not you just bitching like a fucking sheep because you want other people to kind of boost up your fucking attitude. At the moment. Dude, and that's the thing is like complaining gives you something to do, right? Uh, but I like the quote, complaining gives you something to do, but it's like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it gets you nowhere. I like that. Ooh, quote. I like that. That's super fucking sick. I like, I like that. that. I like that a lot. That's a Christine Cardenas quote. Um, so that's really cool. But complaining, I think a, the reason that a lot of people complain is that they get attention for their complaint. 100%. Like as soon as somebody's like, oh, it's fucking I'm having a really hard time booking calls and I'm struggling and that's just the complaint. It's like other people are like, oh my God, like me too. And it's like, then they can do the me twos together. But it's like the me twos don't make you money. So and instead, you're, in you're, just fucking group feeding, you're just feeding this negativity instead, right? The clients, we have 106 clients that have crossed $10,000 a month. And the clients that are crossing $10,000 a month are like, yo, uh, I'm not booking calls and I'm super committed to figuring out what I need to do in order to book calls. So I'm coming in here asking you guys, yo, what are my next steps? Because I know that I might, must be doing something wrong if I'm not booking calls. Cause there's 106 students that have crossed $10,000 a month in this community. So like, I'm curious, like what are they doing that I'm not doing? Because I'll do whatever the fuck it takes. I'm getting there's fucking amped up right now. There's yeah, a I'm difference. Fucking amped up. I don't really even know what the fuck we're talking about. I know. Or they're taking it to an even deeper level, which you guys don't even fucking understand. And they're turning around and they're being like, yo, Guys, they make a post in our group and they're like, I'm not fucking booking calls right now. This is what I'm doing. And they lay everything out. They say, what the fuck am I doing wrong? Mm. It's a huge difference, guys. Yeah. Like, really let this fucking sink in your head. And don't get me wrong. Me and Brian complain. Okay? We fucking complain. We have days where we want to bitch. But we do it in a very specific and, like, coordinated way. Legit. There's Guys, me and Brian, when we need to really complain about something, we call them. It's like, yo, I need a bitch. And it's like, okay. And then we get it all out in fucking 30 seconds to a minute. And then it's like, you done? It's like, yeah. And he's like, how are you feeling? He's like, good. And then boom. And that's literally like the fucking gist and of it. And then because, we move the fuck on. Because there's no fucking point yeah. in getting into this fucking me too bullshit in a fucking little thread on Facebook that literally does nothing. Yeah. Complaining if you want to be no a value. fucking high level performer, act like it. You want to be a fucking millionaire, act like it. You want to have the fucking biggest business in the world. Guess what? They're not making Facebook posts being like, my day fucking sucks. Yeah. It's like, guys, like if you want, here's the thing, right? No matter what you do, there's going to be resistance in anything that you do. Whether that be, yep. if you want to work for fucking Walmart and get paid $15 an hour, like sure you got the security, but you're only going to make $15 an hour, right? If you want to work for in-person and you want to have like an in-person training job and you want to work eight hours a day, like sure you might make three to $7,000 a month, but you're only going to make three to $7,000 a month. And that's the resistance with online coaching. You have to fucking work. Like you have to fucking make posts. You have to get on video. You have to produce content. You have to give value. You have to get on calls. And if you don't like doing those things, don't be an online coach. That's it. Yep. And, and with everything else, you have to have patience and oh, consistency. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stop yeah. fucking complaining that you're not seeing results because you posted for a week and a half and it hasn't been working. Yo, I've seen coaches that have been in this game for 10 fucking years and they're slowly just building their business. And then you see fucking somebody come into their business and they blow up to $50,000 a month. But those coaches are practicing patience and consistency like I fucking talked about yesterday on the pod chats um, and fucking on Clubhouse. And they're just grinding. They're worried about themselves. They're worried about putting the work in. They're not complaining because complaining wastes is wasting time. Again, 100%. guys, your results, the amount of effort you put it on a daily basis. And if you're putting effort into complaining, it's no wonder you're struggling right now. So drop a fucking hashtag in the comments right now or drop, like if you're not, if you're listening to the podcast, I just want you in mentally to say no complaining. But if you're tuning in right now, hashtag no fucking complaining or no complaining. You don't have to say 100%. Fucking. You don't have to say fucking. You can if you want, but. I say fucking. That's you all can say Yo, <laughs> side note, I want no to say this as well. All right, I would love to see this. All right, for everybody, because I know if you're listening to the podcast, obviously you can't comment below or whatever, but you can screenshot this episode, share it to your story, and hashtag no complaining. No complaining. I would love I like that. 
I would I like love that. to see no that complaining. because then it shows you guys committing to no complaining, and that's something that me and Brian vibe hard with right now. Get your shit together. All right. Figure it out. You want to be an entrepreneur? Stop bitching. Just work. Yes. Just work. Literally fucking work. Don't know how to do something? Go on Google. Work. work. All right? Like, come on, guys. Fucking work. All right, guys. So we're here to work today. Um, me and Cole, <laughs> me and Cole, we uh, came up with, we actually called this four secrets to uh, content creation, but um, we get, we're going to give you six. All right? Yeah. So there's going to be three beginner level uh, concepts that are going to help you guys improve the quality of your content. And then we're going to give you some more advanced uh, concepts. So the three uh, beginner level concepts that we're going to get give you guys, we're going to go into those first and I'm going to let Cole hit number one first. 100%. So guys, the first one and the most basic fucking one possible in order to upgrade your content is utilize good lighting. Okay, this is huge. Guys, no joke. A good light source can take a shitty camera and make it look like a high upgraded fucking camera. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to this on the podcast or live with us right now or whatever the case may be, write that down. Utilize good lighting. All right. Whether that be buying a ring light on Amazon for fucking five to $170. Okay. I don't want to hear any excuse about not being able to buy one, by the way. Um, and if you do want to try to come at me with an excuse of not being able to buy one, well, wherever you're fucking living, there's a certain amount of time in a day that has light stand in front of a window and there's your good lighting. I'm literally yeah. doing that right now. So if you are listening to this um, on Facebook or on TikTok or whatever the case may be, you're not on the actual app, you'll be able to see that my face is well lit. And it's because I'm sitting in front of a window because I don't have a ring light with me while I'm on vacation, um, but I'm utilizing good lighting. It, guys, it changes the game. You're gonna have very low, low quality cameras and if you have good lighting, boom, you look way better. I'm also gonna jump in here and say that like, guys, when he says utilize good lighting, I feel like it's, easy to get lost in that idea and you're like i don't know i'm not a photographer blah 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 literally take your phone over to a window and take the picture with the light on your face that's how simple yeah. it is you're doing a live stream yeah go, you go like this you put the phone in the windowsill leaned up against the fucking window you take three steps back and you fucking do your life this is such a binary concept and it's actually super easy to implement but i think that a lot of people don't do it no. And you see a lot of people get on video and like, it's like the room is dark and you can't like really see their face and like may, might, maybe even have lights on behind them and not. In yeah. Front of them. I was so just going to bring that up. If, too. Got yeah. lights on, if you've got lights on behind you, it's going to make you a shadow on the video. Yep. How many of you guys have done that before? It's like, you're on the video, but it's like, you can't even tell that you're on the video because it's a shadow. You want to put the light in front of your, write that down, put the light in front of your face. Yes. Whether you that want be, light hitting you. You want light. You want light, light hitting you. What are the, and guys, for a ring light, literally, I have, um, if you guys are listening, watching the podcast right now, uh, I have a ring light in my office. Um, it's to the left of me. It costs $150. And this ring light is like literally a 22 inch uh, ring light off Amazon. And you guys don't have to go 22 inch. You guys can get like a 15, 14, 12 inch ring light off of Amazon. You guys can even get a desktop one that you can put on top of your desk where every time, a single time you take a photo, you're taking a photo with the ring light. So all of your content is instantly going to look better. 100%. Guys, I literally went to Staples. Um, I was buying another monitor for my computer. Hashtag, I'm a fucking nerd. Um, I've got like three monitors now. <laughs> and I'm walking out and I see ring lights. I think it was $37. And I bought it for Julia. And this ring light is better than all the ones that I have in my house. It's legit. It's fucking dope. She carries it with her now. It compacts to around 11 inches together. But it extends to almost five feet. And it's like, it's perfect. And the actual light itself is around i think it's seven inches in diameter but the actual stand that comes with you can put it all together make it a small tripod guys invest in a fucking ring light if you can but if you can't for whatever bullshit reason all right because i know you all can okay because literally you can find bucks. the money for if it you buy any starbucks at, at any point throughout the month you can buy a ring light a hundred percent um but again if you want to say you can't utilize natural lighting all right, utilize natural lighting. It will fucking take your guys' shit to the next level. Guys, a lot of you, and maybe if you're brand new to the podcast, you might not have heard me say this in the past, but if you're our client, you're listening to this, you've heard me literally preach how much I hate bathroom selfies. 90% of the reason why I hate bathroom selfies is because the lighting is garbage. It looks horrible, all right? Because that you have the light from outside the bathroom shining. Usually the lights in the bathroom are too powerful. You look really shady. It doesn't look like a good picture of light uh, i mean a good lighted picture um and that's the first beginner tip 
Just get in front of some light and there you go. Boom. You're good to go. All right, bro. Tip number two. Tip number two. You want to take this one? Or you want me to go into it? You go ahead. Perfect. Learn how to utilize your phone camera to the best of your ability. This shit's very simple. All right. Go on YouTube right after this fucking pod chats. All right. Go on YouTube and type in um, whatever phone you have. Camera hacks. All right. iPhone 11, 12 Mac or iPhone 11 um, Pro Max camera hacks iphone 12 pro max camera hacks add camera hacks at the end you'll learn so much about your camera it's insane how many of you right now all right if you're listening to this obviously if you're in the podcast you won't be able to tell me uh, but if you're listening to this on facebook etc um i'm willing to bet that all of you guys didn't even know or a lot of you guys didn't know that you can make your phone camera change from 30 to 60 frames and if you change your camera on your phone your iphone to 60 frames, it makes the picture way more clear and it kind of looks more like a GoPro type style filming. So it looks way fucking better when you're filming, but a lot of people are still filming in 30 frames. But when 30 frames, it's more better for like talking, but for like moving around and stuff, 60 frames makes your video look way more crisp. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. It's also, a lot of you guys also, a lot of people don't know that you can, um, how many of you have seen like be, you know, the picture when you'll see like people have on Instagram where they'll be standing and like a train will be like doing a boomerang behind yeah, them. Yeah. You can do that on your iPhone. It's about taking a live photo and then you literally just hold it down, swipe up and bam, you can literally make that boomerang photo just on your iPhone in 30 seconds. You don't need to hire a crazy photographer. It's learning everything about your camera. All of you guys have one of the most powerful cameras in the world right in the palm of your hands, whether you have an Android, not going to go into that because I like to talk a lot of shit about Androids. But still, whether you have an Android or an iPhone, you guys have an incredibly powerful camera. Learn how to fucking use it. And it's as simple as going on YouTube, typing in whatever phone, camera hacks, and you have a fucking a billion videos of like some of the most insane content creators on the planet teaching you guys how to use your phone. Uh, Janika asked if we can do a training on camera hacks. <laughs> no. Because I'm not an expert on cameras, I go on YouTube and I search these things up. Smart. I can show you guys a couple things, but like, Smart. I, I'm not an expert with this. Like so that's it. why I go on YouTube and I search up camera hacks. It's, you know, it's funny. Um, we're talking about no complaining, right? So um, super funny that you, we brought that up because like on this training, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I just learned something new. Like, I'm like, I didn't know that you could do that with an iPhone. That's really cool. But like the way that our entrepreneur brain, brains work, mine and Cole, is like, if there's a problem, we find a solution. So it's like, oh, yo. This, this is like, this is super simple. Like I love, I love that idea. Literally YouTubing um, cam iPhone 11 camera hacks. Cause then you can just go and like, that's such a simple way to find your camera phone uh, hacks for your camera phone. So I love that. That's amazing. That's freaking cool. Um, I just learned something new too. So good job, Cole. High five. hundred percent. High five. There we go. Guys, I'm telling you, start searching it up. This is a very powerful camera. Okay. Number three, the third tip to help you guys immediately upgrade your content is dress well and take care how you look. Guys, this is like super simple, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. You, a lot of you are online coaches working full time from home. How many of you uh, dressed up and got ready to slay your day today? I got my home showered, dressed up. You feeling hundred percent confident that if you jumped on a video or a live stream or, you know, you'd be like, I feel fucking Gucci right now. I'm, you know, just I'm going to bet. Just be honest. I, I, I'm, it's not, this isn't about me. It's about you. I want to make your guys' content better. So yeah. when you guys get on camera, when you get on live stream, when you get on video, when you get on your story, it's like your energy is going to come across. And so if you didn't take care of yourself today and you didn't put yourself in the right state of mind today, and it's like the way that I like to look at this is like, look, look good, feel good. And this applies yes. to even when you're writing content, dog. Even when you're writing content, because like if I'm sitting here and I'm like low key depressed because I didn't take care of myself today and you know, I'm not wearing, I'm still fucking wearing my pajamas that I woke up in today. And it's like, that's the energy that I'm writing my post in. Like that's going to come across. And so it's super simple and super binary, look good, feel good. And for me, it's like making sure that every single day you're like dressing to like, to be your physical best. And for me, it's like, be your physical best at the present time. So for me, guys, right now, I got my hair, my hair all over the place, but I got a hat that looks good. I love these blue light glasses. Like I'm feeling myself, you know? So like, you got to get into a place where you're like, I like my outfit. I like the way I look. And guys, you know, what's funny is I remember, I know Cole's going to remember this. When I was uh, working for Aesthetic Nation, which was my, well, I guess my, Hell yeah, I, I know exactly what my fitness say. business, 
Um, I went through like a year long phase where I literally, um, I would not leave my, I would not leave my house if I wasn't like dressed to the nines. Like, I mean, when he's like, like I mean, like, I mean, like, like we're, we're talking, we're getting close to suits every day. Like I like dress shirt, tie, like scarf, like, like I, I had mittens. I had mittens, all right? I had mittens, like dress shoes, like nice, nice tight black jeans. Like it was like every single day. But my theory on that, and I know it worked, was like every single day I'm going to dress like a boss and then I'm going to act like a boss. Exactly. Yo, I had mittens. I'm not even fucking, I I was in Canada. I didn't have gloves. I had mittens, all right? That's the level that I took this to. Necklace, everything. But I'm telling you guys, it was like, I look good, I feel good. Right now, obviously, it's like I'm, I'm like, I'm dressing the way that I want to dress. But every single day, I make sure that I'm like feeling myself. And mittens, I did have mittens, y'all. So I'm just saying. 100%. If your man says he's not, he's not, he's not cool. All right. <laughs> yo side note on the mittens thing and i'm just gonna throw this out here too i've also seen brian drive a moped and he didn't have mittens and he put socks on his head yeah, i mean i'm about to mute you i'm about to mute you i'm about to mute your ass on my podcast it was super funny Take that back. Had to tell that story. um but one thing that i also want to tell you guys when it comes to this like when it comes down to taking care of how you look like guys it doesn't need to be fancy fucking clothes it's just about feeling good all right, and actually feeling good. Don't dress up to the fucking nines if you don't like dressing that way. All right, I have a very unique fucking style, so I dress like that on a daily basis. Because, guys, when it came to, like, building my own confidence, um, feeling, like, good and comfortable in my own skin so I could come out on camera like who I actually am, etc., it was about challenging myself to really embrace who I was on the inside, and I did that through fashion. So I wear a lot of crazy shit, but I make it look like my own style. Like, and I get a lot of compliments on it all the time. And I fucking love that. It makes me feel good about myself. So that's, I take it very seriously. Like you want to upgrade your content? Stop dressing like a fucking bum. All right. Like, let's be real. Let's just keep it. You guys know I'm coming at you a hot, real, raw all the time. It's true. (laughs) And like, don't get me wrong. I, I've been through the homeless life, all right? I know what it's like, and I'm not trying to knock anybody on that because I know how hard it is. But if a homeless person comes up to you and they're trying to sell you something, how many of you guys are willing to buy their shit? It's the same thing as if you're posting photos and you're in fucking pajamas, not showering for three days or not taking care of yourself because you're sitting in your living room working from behind your computer. There's, upgrade your fucking life there's, there's a lot of reasons i enjoy having you as a friend but the main one is that you just tell it how the fuck it is <laughs> let's be fucking real like take a fucking shower dress nice and sit in front of your computer because you wouldn't dress like a bum and not shower if you're going to a job that was a nine to five in person so show up to your job ready to work i love it look bro. good feel good that is the easiest model possible look good feel go good guys said write that down i've been saying that since i was nine years old no joke running in our house look little nine-year-old look good feel good oh the whole time <laughs> it's my favorite saying of all time i love it i gotta drill it in your guys' head because that is honestly that's probably the, besides the lighting it's the easiest way to upgrade your content agreed all right be still agreed. laughing and i love it <laughs> um yeah i love it so okay so that's three beginner ways to improve your content immediately. Let's talk about three advanced ways to improve your content um, and make sure that you guys are better content creators. So number one, the first thing that we're gonna talk about as an advanced content creator in order to improve your content is, guys, learn how to tell a story with every single piece of content. Learn how to tell a story with every single piece of content. I want you guys to imagine that every single piece of content is an opportunity for you to connect with somebody new that you've never met before. And yep. so if you guys like a lot of you, you know, you, you might have been online fitness coaches for a while and maybe you've been posting content consistently, but like, I want you to imagine that every single content that you post is to somebody new in your audience. Instead yep. of just assuming that people follow your story and assuming that people know who you are and assuming that people are going to know exactly what you mean, like try to offer some context in every single piece of content that you put out. Every single piece of content I write, I try to tell a story. I try to like, and when I say tell a story, what I actually mean is like a really good story. Like if you guys go to a really good movie, like what does it make you feel? For me, a really good movie makes me feel a fucking wide variety of emotions. It's like, it makes me feel like happy and then sad and then fucking angry. I'm like, oh, I hate that guy. It's like, and then I'm like, you know, and then I'm like, and then I'm like invested. I'm like, oh, what's going to happen next? It's like, you've got to get good at writing stories that pull emotions. 
And like the way to get good at pull, like telling stories that pull emotions is when you're writing value-based content, making sure that you're like talking about the emotional pains that are associated with like the negative consequences when you're writing or when you're writing about the vision and like getting the best body that you've ever had in your life, talking about how good it feels to be on the other side of those pains. When you're talking about your personal story and like elements of your personal story where you're getting a little bit more vulnerable, it's like being open and honest about how the fuck you were feeling in that moment where you're talking about when you were 50 pounds overweight or in that moment where you were talking about dealing with your eating disorder or in that moment where you're talking about like your rock bottom. It's like, how are you actually feeling? But getting good at telling a story that pulls on emotional heartstrings is one of the best ways to improve your content. And the best person I can think about right now, I don't know about you, Cole, is Janelle Wheel. It's like pulls on those heartstrings Yo. with every single like piece Yo, of content every that you post, post I've read. It's like, damn, you're just pulling on some heartstrings. So like, you gotta 100%. get better. You gotta get better writing. hundred percent, guys, it will change the fucking game. And that's why we wanted to put that in the more of the advanced category when it comes to like upgrading your content because, um, we always want you guys to be good at writing stories. We always want you guys to have like good, like passion filled captions. Um, but without the basic shit, like the good lighting, et cetera, not a lot of people are going to read them because social media is like an attention game. So we got to attract their attention right away. And then you got to keep them engaged. And that's like, yo, Janelle's the perfect fucking example with this. Like when I listen to her talk about her story or like break everything down, me and her actually had a very in-depth conversation in the DMs. Um, about her story and everything she's been through because I've been through a lot of crazy stuff as a kid as well. And like legit listening, it like touched me. Like it legit was like, yo, this is fucking deep. It made me feel a lot of emotions. And that's exactly what you guys need to fucking do here. Um, and it's just practice, right? How do you get better? You practice and you do research. You're not going to get better just thinking about it. You got to start putting out content. Did this resonate? What do I need to improve on? Did this resonate? What do I need to improve on? And then continue to get better on a daily basis. Bang. All right. Fuck Next yes. tip. Da, da, da. Yo. Are you Next okay? one. Um, so super simple, guys. Obviously, we're going to put this one in the advanced category. All right. Advanced, intermediate, whatever, when it comes to upgrading your content. Um, but first off, before I break this down, I want to make sure that you guys, like everybody's really resonating with the beginner first. Learn how to make good content yourself first. Good lighting, learning your own camera, understanding angles, understanding photography. All right, it's very simple to do this shit up too. Like you guys want a, a great example? Every single person on here wants to upgrade their content. Look up a guy named Peter McKinnon and go to his YouTube channel and just watch some of his YouTube videos while you're doing cardio. I've watched every single fucking YouTube video this guy has for the last five and a half years. Because I love the way he displays stuff. He's such a good videographer and photographer. It's insane. Um, but then after I learned about him, understood everything that he was doing around content, and was like kind of getting the gist of it, then in the advanced category, once I'm starting to write more content and I want to invest in my success, I started hiring videographers and photographers. All right? Don't be so afraid Peter. to invest in your content. So it's Peter McKinnon, right? Is that what you said? Yeah, Peter okay. McKinnon. Okay, cool. Look him up on YouTube or Google. You guys will have a huge amount of content to look after. Like, I literally, he's the GOAT, in my opinion, when it comes to content, not only because his content's good um, in, like, teaching slash just viewing what he's doing, but he's very good at delivering um, what he means in that guy. So I suggest you go check him out. But then again, like once you want to get a little bit better, invest in your content. Don't be afraid to invest in your content. I've already done two video slash photo shoots since being in Kelowna and I've been here for three this is my third day literally first two days bang bang I want to have shoot both days um yeah is it going to be an investment 100% because my boy Braden's not fucking cheap but I know it's going to fucking come through because if my content's upgraded then it's going to draw in attention on my Instagram then my captions create an emotional resonance with my clients or the prospects and the prospects now want to sign into the program, which they see results in. It's yep. all connected guys. Uh, I'm going to jump in. Yo, online fitness coach. If you're making over three K a month, invest in a photographer straight up. Because yep. if you're an online fitness coach and you're making $3,000 a month, you guys got to think about this for a second, right? You got to think, think about this. Like, let's say you pay like a good photographer will cost you anywhere from like 200 to $500 for mm -hmm. a shoot. Okay. Now for 200, 200 to $500, if you guys take one of those shots, that you capture that photo shoot that caught, like really makes you look like a rock star, phenomenal, so good. Now your image is instantly increased on social media and you look like more of an authority. If you sign one client because of the quality of the photos that you're putting out, you already make your money back. One, 
Yeah. Actually, no, you make, because one client's worth $750 over three months. So if you send one client, you triple your investment because yep. you have an upgraded quality and you guys have to start viewing it like that, right? Like I'm always looking for ways to invest in my business. That's also, this is a side note, but like I'm always looking for ways to invest in my business. That's why I also always hire mentors and yep. I always pay people that are smarter than me because I'm like, how can I invest in something that's going to give me a positive ROI? And photography is definitely one of those things that if you invest it will give you a positive ROI, all right? A hundred percent across the fucking board. And that actually brings us into the last point, all right? Well, quote unquote, last point, because we've been literally talking about things all over the place here, which I love, um, that this is something that I have gotten very good at. This is something that me and Brian thrive on, guys. And it's learning how to understand the inner workings of how to create engaging content by doing the fucking research. This is a huge content tip and this is for everything. This is like a generalized tip on how to get better with your business, with your fucking content, with your life, with whatever the case may be when it comes to coaching. Um, but learn how to understand it, do the research. Guys, I brought up Peter McKinnon because I'm not exaggerating that I've watched every single video that is on his YouTube, every one. I went back all the way till the beginning when he started his YouTube channel because I wanted to understand vlogging and photography and angles and lighting and stuff. And don't get me wrong, I'm not a fucking expert. I couldn't take you and get you guys to a photo shoot and take the photos for you because it's really hard for me to understand that stuff when it comes to the cameras. But I get angles. I understand why a photographer is trying to get me to do something now when I'm at a shoot, which makes our cohesiveness better during the shoot. You guys understand that? Like, if you want to get better at content, learn about content. If you want to get better at sales, learn about sales. Do research on this shit. Yeah, I'm going to jump in here and say, like, another way, if you're an online fitness coach, right, and you want to get better at producing content as an online fitness coach, what do you guys think the best thing to do? Uh, like, where do you guys think the best place to study content creators would be? Other online fitness coaches. Yep. But, like, I'm, gonna, I'm also going to add this in there because I think that I need to, and you know, I don't feel like I, I need to, um, because we have 750 students in the 10K Coaching Academy, and I wanna remind everybody that there's a difference between researching and copying. Oh yeah. Kind of, I'm just shit. gonna kind of, researching and copying are two different things. And so when I say research, I mean, go to their page. Like if you, if you know a content creator that's like absolutely crushing it, right, in the 10K Coaching Academy or some of the people that you've seen that have like come through the program and gotten amazing results, go to their page, read through their content and research. Like pick out things, what are they doing? Like what's like something that's really standing out to you? Like what do you feel like in their content, like what type of content are they writing? Maybe one of the things that you do is you go to their page and you realize that your content isn't actually much different from them and it just gives you the confidence that you're on the fucking right path. But because I think sometimes as a content creator, as an online coach, it's like part of the thing that we can get stuck into is like overanalyzing our own content and thinking that it sucks when actually that it's actually really good. Um, but then we go to this person's page and we do research and we're like, oh, our content's actually very similar. So like that must mean that I'm on the right path. You guys get what I'm saying? But like study other online fitness coaches, like go to their page, read their content, see what they're doing uh, and trying to pull inspiration from them. And this is something that like I do consistently as well. Like my mentor is Tacky Mora. He's super smart. He runs a crazy, crazy group. And I'm like, I'm always like looking. And when I see Tacky put up, put out something, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And I go like investigate. And I'm like seeing like how it's like, I, I investigate, I research. Um, so do the research, like don't just put out content and expect that it's going to work. Like study other creators that are doing really well and try to pick apart like what they're doing and why you think it's working. A hundred percent. Guys, like this is the, one of the most important points in the entire thing. And I understand that it's a little generalized, right? Like we've given you guys actionable things that you could be doing. And then when it comes to research, now you have to actually put the leg room in. Um, but it's so fucking important. I'm like, I love that B touched on that when it came down to like actually going to online fitness coaches and researching what they're doing well and then figuring out what you can improve on or what you're already doing well. But I'm honestly just talking about like, just go understand content. Understand what goes into it understand what creates an engaging piece of content and then audit yourself, etc. Like guys, as an example, um, a lot of people know that I started a gaming brand. It's called Amarok De Silva. And I love it. I love gaming. I started streaming. I had no fucking idea what I was doing when it came to streaming, but I wanted to figure it out for, so no joke for three weeks, five hours a day, I was watching YouTube videos, understanding streaming. 
just listening to big streamers, understanding what was going into it, understanding how to do the breakdowns, understanding how to run Twitch, TikToks, videos, what do they need to put out for content, where I should be producing content to draw people to the channel. Um, and I would just do that on my free time or while I was doing other work. I wasn't afraid to put the research in. And I feel like a lot of people, like even in the 10 Key Coaching Academy, you guys have like the one point of research, right? It's like asking us questions, et cetera, which I love. And we're always here to ask your, answer your guys' questions. But don't be afraid to go on Google and YouTube and like really expand your mind a little bit. Brian said, don't be afraid to invest in your success, all right? Hire mentors and like really take your business to the next level. Um, it's true. Don't be afraid to just fucking open up an app and go on Google and break down some articles and read a book and break things down. Boom. Be open it. to expanding your fucking knowledge. I love it. Um, okay, guys. So uh, let's quickly recap. So the beginners, the tips for the beginners, uh, utilizing good lighting, um, learning how to use your phone properly, dressing well, like look good, feel good, right? Those are the beginner level concepts. The advanced level concepts are learning how to tell a story, investing in your content with photographers or video. If you're over 3K a month, invest in your content. And understanding the inner workings of engaging content by doing research on experienced and talented creators. Um, guys, that's it. That's all that brings us to the end of the podcast. We want you to do something with this shit. All right. So like we just dropped a bunch of, a bunch of knowledge, a bunch of nuggets that you guys can take and implement. And I want you to do something with it. Maybe it's going to the window. And the next time you take a photo, you're taking a photo with better lighting, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's going to Google and actually searching up iPhone 11 pro hacks, uh, camera hacks and seeing what you can do with your iPhone. Right? Maybe it's like dressing up, dressing well, and taking your first photo while looking really, really good and presentable. But do something with this information. We don't just want you guys to sit with it because act, like insight without information is completely useless. That's it. That's all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Cole, where can they find you, bro? Yo, this is a good podcast. You guys can check me out on the Wake Up With The Wolf podcast or Instagram and TikTok at Cole Lewis De Silva. Boom. Uh, if you guys want to be entered to win $1,000 cash, all you got to do is screenshot any podcast episode share it to your Instagram stories and tag me at BMarkFit. Let me know that you're tuning in and you automatically enter when $1,000 cash. We're giving it away on March 30th, which is, yo, it's pretty soon. So if you like winning money, screenshot, share, tag, and that's it. That's all. We'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Peace.